Well, let's start the last session of today. And the first talk is by Alexander Belov, who tell us about how to tame quantum time complexity. Okay, thank you, Alex. So yes, so, so this talk will be really about time complexity. And first, I'll talk, I'll give some historic uh, introduction. So like this line of research, like in general, I'm not talking about just my work. It started maybe with this problem. It's a well-known problem. It's not and tree. So we have such a tree, uh, so it can be like really long. And at the end, at the leaves, you have variables. And you want to evaluate the value of this expression. Like maybe what is the query complexity, what's the time complexity. Okay, and um, so um, the naive solution would be to use uh, Grover's algorithm for not end and just compose them together. So to use um, solution for a subroutine as input to a next um, subroutine, which is one level up. Okay, so it works. So like if you have no one not end, it somewhat works if you have Two not ends nested together, okay, but the problem starts that uh, Grover is not exact, and you have to reduce error so to make uh, all of this work so that the error just doesn't blow up everything. And so this introduces work factors, and like the more layers you have, like the more power of your work factor is. So if you have 17 layers, you have essentially to pay work to the power of 17. Okay. And so this essentially kills all the advantage you get with Grover. Okay, so uh, the solution to this problem, I am skipping quite a lot here. Okay, but um, a better solution, better algorithm was obtained for query complexity. So this is, as I said, a long line of work and mostly done by Heihar, but also some other authors that I don't list here. Sorry about that, if you are one of those. Okay, and um, the idea is to use span programs or that's, which is essentially the same thing, uh, dual adversary bound. Okay, so and the idea is as follows: and you start with a, your algorithm, and you can convert your algorithm, which is bounded error, bounded error query algorithm, can convert it into a span program, or if you wish, you can design span program from scratch. Okay, so uh, then you compose span programs together, and then at the end you take a span program and you convert it back into a query algorithm. Okay, so um, essentially it's, uh, somehow there is a real world and there is an ideal world. So ideal world as a span programs, okay, which are composed without error, so exactness, and uh, you can somewhat transfer in both directions. Yeah, so what's, uh, so this is really nice, and this gives an optimal algorithm for not end. Okay, but the problem with uh, okay, one small problem, also maybe not a problem, maybe a feature, that's how you think about it, it's the change of the model. So span programs, they look completely different than uh, query algorithms, so if you are used to quantum algorithms, then uh, just uh, getting to use span programs can be really complicated. Okay, so recently, so it was a work by myself and uh, Yoko. So we obtained the notion of uh, quantum Las Vegas query complexity, so which has the same benefits, so that's the third point, the same benefits with the span programs. Okay, and uh, it uses the same model. So it uses it's also a quantum algorithm. What changes is uh, how you define complexity. So let me, Go to the next slide. So one uh, big disclaimer. So here, when I am drawing two lines, two parallel lines, they correspond to direct sum, not to the tensor product as usual. And I also use this arrow just to indicate this. So everywhere, these are direct sums. Okay, and so for every query, quantum query algorithm can be written this way. Okay, I assume that you can apply your imperturical um, conditionally in a controlled way. So there is some part of the state that is not processed by the Oracle, and there is some part of the state that is processed by the Oracle. So the standard definition is just the number of times you ex execute the input Oracle. So in this case, it would be three. Okay, so you define Las Vegas complexity, so you define query state, which is the direct sum of all these states you give to your input Oracle, and you define Las Vegas quantum query complexity as the norm of this state. Okay, so the sum, uh, norm squared, sorry. So the sum of norm squared of all the things you give to the input oracle. And in this way, uh, you can give like a tiny part of your state to the oracle. So for instance, you can you can have a controlled operation and you decide whether you need oracle or not. So you're only, only paying for the norm that you actually do process. So in a way you can see this is a probability 
that you like the expect the sum of probabilities of uh, expectation, the expected number of executions of the error. Okay, and um, so it's nice. And it behaves like randomized Las Vegas complex. So if you're used to randomized Las Vegas complex to one of nice features is that is very nice uh, composition results. So this is just one example. So I have an algorithm which have a bunch of subroutines, uh, like a big oracle that everyone calls, and I'm interested in the number of queries. So the, this is a query complex of the composed algorithm. So this is the number of queries given directly from I to the input oracle. And this is the sum uh, of uh, all query complexes of individual subroutines on the state that is given to them by I. And so, uh, and so one feature of Las Vegas query complexity is that complexity depends on the input. So for different inputs, you can have different complexity. Okay, so this is uh, really easy to prove for Las Vegas complexity, but uh, it's hard to attain using standard technique because, sorry, because uh, you don't know what the state is, so you don't. So you have to run uh, the worst number of times. But whereas in this case, it's automatically computed for you. Okay, so. Um, so, and yes, and we call this uh, thing thriftiness. Okay, and so uh, the goal of this of our research is, can we get the same benefits like exactness and thriftiness for time complexity? And another uh, result uh, problem that current algorithms do not utilize Las Vegas complexity really nicely. For instance, if you use Grover, the Grover acts um, with query on all the state all the time and the the result is that it's overcooks the state, so we know very well. And so it's not nice. So we, we need slightly different types of algorithms. So, um, so we define uh, this notion of transducers. Okay, so this is a, a purely linear algebra at this moment, and it's a theorem that is quite easy to prove. So if you have S is a unitary, which you call a transducer. And so it's X in a, a direct sum of two Hilbert spaces, H and L. Yeah, and uh, then uh, you can prove, uh, so this, if S is a unit, then for every uh, Xi that comes in, uh, there exists unique tau and essentially unique V, which you call a transducer, such that um, S transduces, as what's how it's depicted here, it transduces Xi plus V into tau plus V. And moreover, this mapping from Xi to tau is unitary, and so we denote it as a this kind of restriction, transduction action of S on the space H. Okay, and um, so how we can use it? So this is um, like this our transducer, and uh, instead of thinking about this as a unit, we think about it as its transduction action on this space. So this is somehow a pub, uh, private space of the transducer. We never access it. What's happening? <laughs> Oh, good. So, um, yeah, and so the transduction complexity is defined as the norm squared of the transducer, of the, yes, of the catalyst. You can also call it catalytic complexity, and uh, so it's very similar to weakness size for span programs. Okay, and there exists an algorithm that um, executes uh, every transducer as a black box, the number of times which is equal to the transaction complexity, and approximately uh, trans, uh, transformed Xi into tau. So this makes sense, all this, all this stuff. So how the algorithm works, very, very briefly I will explain. So this is a transformation I want to perform. I want to perform Xi into tau. This is a transformation I get uh, just by the definition of transducer. So uh, Xi plus V into tau plus V. Okay, and this is what we actually transform. Xi plus V divided by square root of K, where K is a large integer. Uh, and so if K is a large integer, um, this part is small. And so this is where approximation comes from. So you can, uh, you can um, neglect it and you get some small error. So it's a pretty standard thing. Okay, and so that's the main idea of how the algorithm works. We just execute SK times where K is a sink. Um, we have this uh, uh, V divided by square root of K. It just sits here as a pedal tone all the time. Okay, and then we just transform uh, this Xi into tau piece by piece. So we break, break it into K copies, where K copies are additive. Okay, and then we process uh, each copy by itself. So it's very, very, very standard algorithm. Very easy to see why it works. Okay, and so um, let me first uh, very briefly talk about queries. So um, I, I draw this picture of a query algorithm. 
which is like a canonical form. So you can also get a canonical form of a transducer, which uh, has which can make queries. Uh, it turns out that uh, without loss of generality, you can assume that there is only one query, uh, which is applied at the very beginning, and you only it's a part of the catalyst that is processed by uh, by the oracle. So it's very very simple standard form. Okay, and so this S uh, uh, doesn't doesn't use uh, input oracle at all. Okay, and um, so why can we do this? So this is the query algorithm algorithm in general, which we saw. Uh, you can also think this as a transducer or as an algorithm. Um, and so what? how can we get a transducer out of it? Um, so we just, uh, here we just wait and calculate what the query is. Transducer doesn't do that. It just guesses what the query state is altogether. So it, it's the catalyst. And then uh, we perform our algorithm as before. But uh, instead of making a query, we substitute what we query to the already processed query. Yeah, so instead of this picture, we have this picture. So we have just one query as in the very beginning, as promised. Uh, okay, and so, and the size of the transducer uh, is uh, Las Vegas complexity. So it's just the query state, it's the direct sum of all the things given to the input Yeah, okay, so that's how we get this canonical form, just by guessing and then substituting essentially checking whether we guess correctly. Okay, you can see that this is equal to this. So this state is equal to this state. Okay, and um, so that's um, how we convert uh, Las Vegas query complexity to usual query complexity. We just use this uh, construction, it's transducer, and we execute the algorithm from before. Um, yeah, so uh, in general, there are three uh, complexity measures of a transducer. So, um, uh, this part is a bit uh, not so nice about them. So we have to deal with three different things, but okay. So the one thing is time complexity, which I've been neglecting so far. It's uh, okay, so this is just a unitary, a usual circuit. Uh, so it's the number of gates or so the time you have to spend to actually implement this unitary. So if you have to do that. Okay, and another two things. So this is, um, yeah, this is just time complexity. Another two things are, Poorly mathematical, so it doesn't depend on your model. So one is transduction complexity, which is already defined is the squared norm of the catalyst. Okay, in this case, catalyst is broken into two parts. So one is not processed by the query, uh, by the input oracle, uh, and another one is processed by the input oracle. Okay, and um, so this is uh, this is the same definition as previous. We just uh, have two parts now. Okay, and the query state is. Um, the query state which is given to the input oracle. So, and so query complexity, it's uh, Las Vegas query complexity is the norm of the query state, norm squared of the query state. Um, it's just uh, this thing, norm squared. And you can, so the question is, why do we call it a query complexity? It turns out there is a refined algorithm which is slightly more complicated than the one I showed you previously, but not more, but not too complicated. So it uh, executes this part, this unit, which is Oracle OS, um, a number of times, which is uh, transduction complexity, and it executes the input Oracle, the number of times, which is query complexity. So the number of queries is indeed the query complexity. And it, as before, it approximately transforms Xi into tau. Yeah, I, I, didn't, I don't have this on slides, but um, it turns out that uh, it also works if you have multiple input Oracles. Uh, with different complexities, then you execute each input oracle uh, given the number of times which is given by uh, the, the by the norm squared of the query state. Okay, so it's all in the paper. Okay, and uh, another thing about this um, canonical form that it's really simple. What you can do, so um, just to remove this thing, like the number, the part of the state which is not processed by the oracle. So let me go back a number of slides to understand why. Because uh, going back to this uh, slide, uh, you see that all the, so without loss of generality, if we are only interested in query complexity, uh, this uh, catalyst is a query state. So all the catalyst is processed by the Oracle. So if you are interested in query complexity, uh, then you can just remove this thing. Then it's kind of easy optimization problem. Uh, uh, we want to find the best, um, Catalyst so that we, uh, so it's 
uh, stays the same under application of unitary and the transform psi into tau for like for the selected pairs of psi and tau we want to uh, transform. So it would be a, a state conversion problem in technical terms. Yeah, and if you do this, it turns out that the adversary bound. Yeah, right, and you can you get it like really really fast. Okay, so um, let me now go to time complexity. Uh, time complexity is um, actually the main uh, selling point of our work, um, besides the definition of the user. Uh, so, uh, so we've been talking about very complex for time complexity. Uh, you can do a similar thing. So now imagine you have a pro program. Uh, okay, so now I'm clearly, I am interested in the number of gates. Where, so each GI is an elementary operation, a gate. Okay, and um, what I can do, uh, just guess all the history state of the algorithm as a catalyst, and um, then just do the same thing as before. So instead, uh, so essentially, so I perform uh, all this GI in parallel. So I'm performing this operation to direct sum of uh, GIs or GTs. And it turns out, okay, so if I shift everything um, nicely, so this state preserved, I get in psi and I get out T. So it's like a history state that is uh, shifted by one, one position. Okay, and this can be done efficiently assuming um, um, quantum random access gate, which is a powerful quantum random access memory where you have random quantum random access to quantum memory. Okay, and so what happens, um, transduction complexity becomes time, comp time complexity, because, uh, okay, the size of the, uh, of, uh, the size of the catalyst um, in this case is the number of elementary operations. So time complexity, so assuming this uh, powerful gate is order of one, Okay, and the query state becomes query state. So I didn't draw it here, but you can combine the both things. So you can have queries which are processed and also have this time complexity. Okay, so essentially substitute transaction complexity becomes time complexity. So again, one point that uh, you can also do things without assuming the quantum random access gate. You get some interesting results, but um, they are not so nice, I would say so. And I also don't have time to talk about them here. Okay, so um, then you can use like say composition as before, so the same picture as before, which we had for in previous settings. And uh, it's very similar. So now, but now instead of uh, programs, I have uh, transducers, which I compose. So it's not uh, obvious how we compose transducers, but uh, you can do this. It's not too complicated. And so the, it's not just the way I have exactly the same model. I have to pr prove something also, but um, and uh, design how I do this, but it's doable. So for Query complexity, I have exactly the same expression as before and a similar expression for transduction complexity. So the time complexity is just additive. So this time complexity thing is a bit weird, but if this is order of one, this is order of one, this is also order of one. So I can uh, essentially ignore it. Yeah, so and uh, so uh, remembering that transduction complexity is time complexity, so I get composition results, which attain thriftiness uh, in the same way as in query complexity. Okay, so... Um, Another thing is, uh, which is like a different thing altogether, is that uh, quantum works turns out to give exact transistors or quant correct. So one thing is electric quantum works. So quantum works is a really, really broad subject. Okay, but uh, if you concentrate on electric quantum works, which is uh, has a powerful version of a quantum work that uh, incorporates many algorithms, including uh, learning graphs and uh, other stuff. Um, then they are transducers and they are exact transducers in the sense that they perform exact transformation without any error. And the, and the uh, analysis is extremely simple. And uh, so this is a new paper, which I uh, use this opportunity to uh, advertise. So it's not in this paper, which I'm presenting, but it's a new result that um, there is this exponential separation by a quantum work by Charles, Cliff, uh, Diotta, Farhi, Gutmann, and uh, Spielman, where they achieve uh, exponential separation between uh, randomized algorithm and quantum algorithm using quantum work on this graph. But their, complex, but their analysis was suboptimal and very complicated. Using uh, transducers, it's, the proof is optimal. So we can prove winner heating time, and um, it's 
half a page of a proof. So it's extremely, extremely simple. So kind of also shows that you can do it in different ways. So my last uh, for like a per penetrum slide is about purifiers. The purifier is a, again a different thing. So uh, this is a for for results is majority voting. So this is how you reduce errors. So when I start talking about not and trees, so you, I said that you reduce errors, you reduce error errors using majority voting. Okay, and so this is a formulation that there is a quantum procedure that gets as an oracle a bounded error unit. So bounded error unit I mean that's a program that uh, otherwise your function is bounded error. So uh, transducer, uh, so purifier treats it as an input oracle. So we can reduce the error all the way down to epsilon in query complexity, which is logarithmic in one over epsilon. Okay, and time complexity is also logarithmic in one over epsilon. So using uh, transducers and essential quantum works, you can get a purifier, which is a, a transducer that does the same thing. Uh, you can reduce the error to epsilon. The difference is that query complexity is order of one. So it doesn't depend on the error you want. So it's still constant. The constant depends on the error you start with, so which is usually one third. Yeah, and time complexity, this is um, it's a bit uh, slippery business. And so if we assume again, powerful RAM model, we can also do it in constant time. So constant number of uh, random access operations essentially. Okay, and this way we obtain exactness. So I show you how to get swiftness on two slides ago. And now this is how we get exactness just by composing with these purifiers. Okay, and let me just summarize. So we define transducers. Okay, so it uses the same model. Uh, it's a quantum algorithm. So um, it uh, extends the definition of computation. So a different way how you can compute stuff just using where you guess a part of your state and just you have to, uh, and this uh, guess can be like really, really huge, but you have to ensure that it doesn't change during your computation, which is like non-trivial thing. Okay, and it has the same benefits as pen programs for query complexity, but it also includes transduction complexity, which in parentheses means time complexity. So it, it can incorporate quantum works really nicely, as we saw, and so the open problems are applications. Um, whenever you have a complicated algorithm where you compose a lot of stuff, you can, say, and assuming the QREG model, we can use it as a black box. So if you next time want to do something like this, I, would be really happy if you would just uh, consider possibility of using this machinery. So maybe you can get, shave uh, some work factors with this, or maybe attain a better uh, improvements. Okay, and so also it's very interesting. Um, so for QRAC, you use it as a black box for, like you, without QRAC, you have to work more, but it's on the other hand, it might be more interesting. So I think it's kind of interesting research directions, how, how much we can do it, like, just using the standard one and two qubit gates. Okay, so and uh, other ways to construct transducer. So we see quantum works and how we can convert any program into a transducer. Maybe there are some other interesting ways how you uh, can get quantum speed ups using transducers, which are out there. Okay, so that's it. So thank you very much. Do you have questions? I have one actually. Can you yeah. can you go back to uh, slide fourteen? Fourteen. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, it's uh, way too much. Yes. Uh, one thing I don't understand, like this side two ball, like uh, yeah, it depends on on the oracle as well, right? It depends on psi. And in the oracle as well, because it could be. Yes. So then, but then, is it isn't it a problem that uh, in the in the bottom part you're guessing psi two? That depends on the oracle, or is it, it's fine? It's fine because, uh, okay, I don't really understand what you want to query. So one thing, it depends on the particular oracle that is here, but it's uh, all the same oracles that we execute. So all these three oracles are the same. Okay. And uh, so, it's, uh, it's, so it depends on this initial state and the oracle. If you fix them, that everything is fixed. Okay, and so the algorithm just guesses it. Yeah, so it doesn't mean that it depends like on this output of the oracle. Well, maybe that would be the right question. So it depends on this execution, but we, we guess it. So so sometimes the time disappears in this case. So we somehow get some uh, 
parts of the same state from mid-air, which we, uh, otherwise we would have to wait for. Other questions? Uh, thanks for the nice talk. So uh, my question is about the role of the catalyst. Uh, it's not uh, exactly clear to me. Like, because uh, you said that uh, the transformation from Xi to Tau yeah. is always unitary. Yes. So why do we need to carry the catalyst in the algorithm? Can't it just be encoded in the unitary in some way? Oh, I yeah. So. Yeah, so um, yeah, so that's a unitary, but the question is how is it how is it how hard it is to implement this unitary? So it can be that okay, I think this would be the right side. So this unitary could be like um, a really so this is this unitary we usually define and that's what we care about. Yeah, but it might be hard to implement. And but this unitary may be very fast to implement. Yeah, and so uh, that's how we implement it. So you can also think about this as a like idea of like a quantum walk, where you have one iteration of a quantum walk, which is actually easy to implement. It's just product of two reflections, which is each of them is easy. And but if you run it for quite some time, you get a driven on trivial non-local uh, transformation. So the question is: so why we care is that this might be much much easier to implement than this one. Thanks.